In part one, I mentioned the usual way of doing work with Ansible is by using roles and playbooks. Now to explain what that actually is. A role is just a list of commands that Ansible will execute on a target machine in a given order. A playbook is then used to determine which role should be applied to which target machine. Every role is a directory below roles and it must at least contain a folder called tasks which contains a file named main.yml. Let me show you how to create a role. When you set up a new server you often have to install some basic tools like a text editor or some network utilities. I want to group the commands for installing those tools in a role called basic. Every role is a directory below roles and it must at least contain a folder called tasks with a file named main.yml in it. So I create the necessary directory structure and put the required main.yml there. Inside the file main.yml I can now define that Ansible should install the vim package. I start by giving the task a descriptive name. It's not strictly required to provide a name, but as Ansible prints them out later on they help to identify what happens at any given moment. The apt module only requires the name of the module to be installed, given here with a pkg parameter. But for clarity I also provided the state parameter, which defines in which state the package should be in. Installed is the default value of the parameter, so I could have skipped it here. Ok, now that I have the first role I can create a playbook and assign the role to all servers. A playbook is just another YAML file and I can name and place it however I like, so I just go for playbook.yml in the main folder. Every entry in a playbook starts with the hosts that the following directives should apply to. I want the basic role assigned to all hosts, so I just define all as target. Installing packages requires root privileges, so I tell Ansible to become another user, which means by default Ansible will run the commands as root by using sudo. Finally, I can define the roles I want to use. And now I can run Ansible playbook to execute the playbook. Similar to the plain Ansible command, I have to tell Ansible playbook to ask me for the sudo password. And of course I have to specify the playbook file to use. Let me explain what just happened. The output you can see is the status information that Ansible Playbook generates while running. The line starting with play indicates the targets that the following commands will be run on. I defined all as targets, so all is what I get. After that you can see two sections that start with task. The first is a general setup task, which by default Ansible will run at the beginning to collect some data about the target hosts. The second task is the one I specified in the basic role. Ansible will indicate the role and the name I gave to the task. Inside the task section Ansible shows the status of the task on each machine. Change means that Ansible had to do something to reach the desired state. In this case Ansible had to install Vim on all three hosts. If Vim had been installed already Ansible would list the particular host in green and the status of OK. The last part is the summary about the run. Please note that a task that changed something successfully is counted as changed and as OK. That is why this recap shows two tasks as OK and one as changed, even though there were only two tasks per host in total. OK, the first package has been installed. Let me show you how to install additional packages. I don't need a new role for this, I can just extend the existing one. Let's install DNS utils and git. I can simply copy the lines I used for vim, replace the package value and update the name of the task.
I can now run Ansible Playbook again. I don't have to update the playbook.yaml. All changes were made in the basic role and that is already assigned to all hosts. Again, Ansible Playbook gives me a status what it did. And you can see the Vim task doesn't show up as changed as we already installed Vim with the first playbook run. Git also didn't show up as changed. That is because the machines already had Git installed via the OS installation. That also demonstrates that Ansible will actually check the status of a package before installing, even if the installation of that particular package wasn't done by Ansible. Installing packages is a quite common job when setting up a new machine, so it's worth knowing a way to save on typing when using Ansible. Instead of defining a task for each package, I can define one task to install packages and just pass a list of the packages that I need. Ansible uses the with item notation for this. Instead of a package name, I write item surrounded by double curly braces. Then I extend the task to include the with items option and pass a list of packages. When I run Ansible Playbook now, you can see that there is only one task, but it lists all the items I specified. Another common task is copying files over to the target hosts. Ansible brings the copy module for this. Let me demonstrate this by rolling out a modified bash rc file. The first thing to do is to specify a new task for this. I could create a new role for the bash rc, but as this is also some sort of basic setup, I'll include it in the basic role. But that's just my preference. It would be perfectly fine to have a separate role for this. The common options for the copy module are source and destination. As you would expect, source is where to find the file on the control machine, relative to the main.yaml file. And destination is where to put the file on the target host. Owner and group specify to which user and group the file should belong and mode defines the access rights of that file. The access rights have to be specified the same way you would do when using chmod on the command line. Now I have to put the bash rc at the location I specified as source. Therefore I create the files folder inside the role and copy a prepared bash rc there. The bash rc I'm using here basically adds a little color to the bash prompt. Okay, let's run Ansible Playbook. And it told me that it copied the file over. But when I log into the web server, the shell prompt is still as monochrome as it was. What happened? Well, there is still a bash rc in the user's home directory that overrides the changes I made. So I have to remove that file for the changes to take effect and I want to do this with Ansible. So back to the tasks definition. I'm going to use the shell module to remove the file. It lets me execute any shell command. In addition, it comes with a creates parameter. This parameter defines a file which existence Ansible will check and Ansible won't excuse the shell code if that file already exists. By using this, I can tell Ansible to only move away the initial bash RC. If the user decides to create a new one and as long as he doesn't remove the rename file, Ansible won't delete the bash RC again. As root has also a default bash rc, I'm letting Ansible move it also.
Now I can run Ansible Playbook again. Ok, let's check if it worked now. Looks good, both the user and root have the new prompt. Ok, now that we have covered the basics of roles and playbooks, we can go on with creating the host specific roles in the next video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.